Uh, good morning, Trevor. Many of our viewers will have relatives in Israel. What, what can you tell us about the safety of British citizens in Israel right now? We've already heard from the Israeli ambassador that at least one British citizen is in Gaza. Well, well, look, first of all, let me just say, we'll have all been horrified by the barbaric scenes that we saw with Hamas's uh, indiscriminate attack uh, yesterday, and uh, we are unequivocally in support of the State of Israel um, as they deal with that threat, uh, and they have the absolute right to defend themselves. Uh, on the subject of British citizens, we're obviously working very closely and have been in contact with the Israeli government, um, about uh, any British citizens that are in, in, in Israel and will obviously continue to work with them and obviously get information and work with their families back here in the United Kingdom. Uh, is there travel advice that you uh, need to give to the public? Yes, I, I'm not going to give it here on air. I would refer people to the Foreign Office website on GovUK because that information is kept up to date and up to the minute based on the latest position. And of course, my department is working closely with airlines that fly to Israel, working with the Israeli government on the position there to make sure we keep people safe. OK, thank you. Can we turn to your own responsibilities as Transport Secretary now? Now, last week, your uh, leader spoke several times about long-term decision-making, which to most people would imply some kind of bipartisan agreement on, for example, HS2. Um, what would you like to hear from Sir Keir Starmer this week? Well, if, on, on many subjects, but including on HS2, it would be nice if the Labour Party had the same position one day to the next. We, we made our position very clear last week. The Prime Minister set out why we had changed our position on HS2, which is because the facts have changed. The costs of the project have gone up, uh, significantly and the benefits have reduced partly because of the change in travel habits so we're taking every penny that we've saved and we're reinvesting that in other transport infrastructure across the country in the north in the midlands and elsewhere to projects which actually we think better fit what people I, need I'd, li I'd like to come to all of that but i just want i asked you what you'd like to hear from sir keir starmer and uh, if i may say so i, I don't think it's, it's the best invitation to the opposition party to join you in an enterprise to start by telling them that they're, they're flip-flopping. I mean, isn't there an invitation well, here to join well, you have been in, in a common cause? Well, look, Keir Starmer's had multiple different positions on HS2, and I listened carefully to what the Labour deputy leader said yesterday. She had a different position, saying that she wanted to carry on building HS2. Now, we've set out our position clearly, which is that we want to take every penny that we're saving and reinvesting it in those transport projects. It's for others to decide what they want to do. If they don't agree with us and they want to carry on building the second phase of HS2, then they need to tell people whether they want to cancel those other transport projects. So, look, I would urge everyone to do what we've done, which is to put the national interest first, make the decision that we have. Uh, we think that's the right decision for the future, and we look forward to campaigning on that in the general election, to winning that election and delivering on those commitments. All right, well, let, let's, let's test your claim to clarity here. Um, you've launched this idea of a new network north that's supposed to uh, soak up mm -hmm. this £36 billion quid that you freed. Um, if I can just ask you very quickly for some yeses and noes on some things. Um, is the Bradford station going to be built? Yes, it is. We, we were very clear about the, the okay. pr promise for Bradford. £2 billion for the station, the line. I was in Bradford last okay. Thursday with the leader of the council, the Labour okay. leader of the council, the West Yorkshire Mayor, um, and they welcomed our commitment to that investment in Bradford. All right. That... that... That is admirably clear. Let me ask you about another one. The Leamside line, which your roads minister... You said last week was going to happen. Your roads minister said since you're just looking into it. Who's right? Well, what we're doing... Well, what we're doing is we're going to develop the business case for that, but we've made a big commitment to the North East 
uh, elected mayor for a significant amount of money, I think £1.8 billion, and it'll be for them to decide how they spend that money. And, and they, they obviously okay. have Leam Sideline as one of their priorities, and uh, the uh, incumbent uh, okay. in that position set that out last week. OK, that's an, that's an amber on that one. Um, uh, let me go ask a, th a third one. Is the Euston Station development going to be built even if there is no private money? No, we've been very clear. We want to get Euston built. We're going to take away the delivery of the station from HS2 Limited. We think it's much better if we have a more ambitious development plan for Euston, have a development corporation to build thousands more houses, uh, more business development and also and, private investment. And are you guaranteeing it's going to That's be built? That's what we want to deliver. Well, look, we think yeah, we've you got... You want to, but are you we, guaranteeing we it's going to be built? It built? We've just had... Well, look... We've just mm. demonstrated with the development of Battersea and Nine Elms, we got £9 billion of private investment into that scheme, including to develop the extension to the Northern yeah. Line okay. underground. Uh, we think that's the right model okay. to save the taxpayer money and deliver quality public infrastructure. OK, OK, you can, you can see why I'm, I'm a bit bothered about clarity here. You're very clear on your first answer, but your second answer, Leamside, is mm, depends on tra what Tracy Babin thinks. And your third answer is, well, we've done something like this before, so maybe we'll... You can see why people are a bit anxious about it. You announced that, that there'd be a Manchester Metro extension, which, by the way, had already been built. Um, you announced contactless ticket. No, no, ticketing. on that... No, Grant no, no, on that... already announced no, no, on Twitter Trevor, one. Uh, I mean, I, the, the point I'm really yeah, making the, here on the is... Manchester airport, it, the Manchester Airport extension is an extension. It already goes to one terminal. It's now going to go to the next terminal. So that's actually a new project. OK, so it's an, an add-on. It's an add-on. It's an add-on. But, but you see what I'm saying uh, yeah. here? That on all of these things, there's, an, there's a level of ambiguity which you want from your opponents, but you're not necessarily delivering yourself. No, I don't think there's anything ambiguous at all. We've taken every penny of the savings from HS2, £36 billion, and we've set out how they're going to be spent in the parts of the country where uh, HS2 okay. is going to be spent. So most of it, two-thirds going to the north, £10 billion going okay. to the Midlands, and the savings from getting private investment into Euston elsewhere in the country. I think that's very clear and happy to be judged on it. There's one question which the Prime Minister didn't quite answer in his speech last week. Um, he said he took his decision because the facts had changed. On July the 17th, mm -hmm. you tweeted that HS2 would connect our largest cities, uh, which must include Manchester and Birmingham, because they're the second and third, uh, third or second, and it would create tens of thousands of jobs. You said that on July 17th. What actually ha happened in 11 weeks between July 17th and last week? The what facts changed? Well, well, two things. First of all, of course, we are still committed to delivering HS2 from Euston to Birmingham. That's not, a, that's not an insignificant project. That's a huge project, huge amounts of public money to deliver a big capacity increase. And it will still take 30 minutes off the journey time between London, Euston and Manchester, yeah. for example. Yeah, but, so but you knew think, that in First July. of all, we're still you building that. that. The second... Yeah, yeah. So, so the second point is that we are seeing increasing cost pressures on delivering HS2 and the decision for the Prime Minister and myself was whether we wanted to sign up to those increasing My point is you knew all that in July. Or whether it was right to reinvest it. Well, no, there's been increasing costs. Did you not know that in July? Did you not know that, 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 that there's this vast has... overrun in July? We did, but we've had further work done by the company and at some point you have to say do we continue spending more money on a project where the benefits have reduced because of the different way people now travel? Business and commuter traffic is down by a half, for example, on the railways. Leisure travel okay. is up, so, but business so, and commuter traffic, which uh, was such an forg important for, part Forgive of the me, we have heard that. And, and you make that decision. We, forgive me, we are running out of time, but, I, but it seems to me that it wasn't the facts that changed, it was your mind that changed. And there's no dishonour in saying that. You knew all of this in July. You just changed your mind. Why not say that? Well, no, look, I think the pressures on the, the finances have actually changed uh, over the summer. Uh, and we've looked at the facts, we worked through all this information okay. and say, when the facts change, you make a different decision. Mark, Harp Mark Harper, thank you very much for your time this morning.